Undoubtedly, one of the highlights of pretty much all of LG's recent flagship phones is the smart camera tech slapped onto the back, and the G7 is no different. This AI-driven camera is packed with features, and we're going to take a deeper dive now into that app, check out some of the features you can expect, and whether they're actually worthwhile. Now, first of all, to jump into the camera app, you can, of course, just tap the camera icon, or in an impromptu situation, you can dive into settings, go to general, and head to the shortcut keys. And there's actually a couple of quick and easy ways of diving straight into that camera app, even when the phone is hibernating. The first is to double tap that volume down key, and the second one is to press that power key twice. This top option is actually disabled by default, so you'll have to turn that on if you wish to use it. And then, when the phone is hibernating, all you need to do is double tap that volume down key, and boom, you're straight into the camera app, just a second or two delay, ready to take a shot. And ditto, a double tap that power key, double tap, and boom, again, straight into it. And of course, you won't be able to see your photos or anything, the phone will actually still be locked. You'll just be able to take photos, take a bit of video, and then you'll have to unlock it as usual. Now that camera app can be a little overwhelming at first glance. There are lots of different toggles and options to get to grips with, but to be honest, most of them can be ignored if you just simply wanna point and shoot. It's just a case of point, tap the shutter button and it'll take a photo. It's in full auto mode to begin with, so you don't even need to think, worry about different settings or anything. You get a number of toggles here down the left hand side. First one is quite obvious, a bit of flash action. You can toggle it to auto, full on or full off. You've also got an option to swap between the front and rear cameras. And then this little bad boy here is various filters and also AR stickers as well, all combined into one glorious hemorrhage of weirdness. The filters are basically take them and leave them, usual vintage, nostalgia, black and white and all the rest of it. If you tap into the AR stickers, you can basically turn your mates into a Disney nightmare. And the good news is that even works with the selfie camera. Oh God, I'm gone. What, what even is that? I'm eating a watermelon apparently? Open your mouth. Great. This this is what the 21st century has brought us to, people. Forget space travel, this is the future. The next button takes you into various camera modes. We'll go into that in a second. And then you've got your settings menu here. Dive into that settings menu and you've got some decent features in here that are well worth exploring. First of all, down the right hand side here, you've got the various resolutions which are well worth checking out. So for instance, you can toggle between your full HD and your ultra HD and the frames per second rating as well. You can also uh, toggle between various photo resolutions too and you can also choose between full vision modes and the standard vision mode. So in full vision, just back out the settings as you can see, it then uses the entire stretch 19.5 by 9 aspect ratio screen to display what you're going to be taking a photo of. You also get a super bright camera mode that basically gives you an option of uh, taking a brighter photo when the conditions are rather dim. And that option is also available for video as well which is quite nifty although not for 4K or 60 frames per second shooting. And what it essentially does is it just leaves the lens open a little bit longer, sucks in a bit more light. Uh, live photo, we've seen this on a number of phones recently. It's quite handy if you're taking lots of shots of your, your kids, your pets, something that's quite animated. It busy shoots a small video snippet with every photo that you take. It will suck up your storage a lot faster, obviously, because it's shooting a little video with every photo, but it's quite nifty for bringing your gallery to life. Here's a couple that we shot earlier. You'll also see that there are some camera modes housed down here on the right edge. These are the camera modes that LG reckons you'll use the most. There's the AI cam mode, which effectively just distracts you by throwing a load of words onto the screen. So for instance, wine, document, office, alb alum, flower, I'm not really sure what that is, fashionable, cauliflower, spinach, infinity pool. It's just gibberish. And frankly, I've done some testing with it and it doesn't seem to make much difference apart from occasionally making your photos look quite artificial. So uh, I'd recommend keeping away from that, to be honest. You've also, of course, got the standard portrait mode, which uses that dual lens setup in order to really focus on your subject and give them a nice bokeh style blurred background to help them really stand out. Definitely recommend checking that out. It's an effective little effort. And then, of course, you've got a bit of Google Lens support, which you can also access using a double tap of that side mounted uh, Google AI button. And what it does is it just scans whatever is in front of you. And then if it's, for instance, a famous monument, it'll tell you a little bit more about it. If you're scanning an object, it'll try and search for it online. If you find some text, it will copy and paste it in, all kinds of great stuff like that. It's a bit hit and miss though, unfortunately. It's a bit more missed than it is hit, but give it a go if you want to. Now, of course, that G7 does sport a secondary wide angle lens. You can actually swap between the primary and the secondary lens at any time with a quick top of these little toggles up top here. So it's in the primary lens to start with, 
tap this secondary icon, it swaps to that wide angle view and you can see a lot more of whatever you are trying to shoot. Very, very handy when you're trying to shoot, for instance, a Vista or a big group of your mates. And I tap back that original icon and you're back in the primary lens. Now, if we dive into the modes, you can see there's quite a few different bits on offer. The manual photo and video modes are definitely well worth checking out because they give you full control of your final shot. As you can see, you've got likes of white balance, focus, ISO levels and everything, which you can toggle uh, and you can just do quick adjustments using this little virtual dial on the side here. It's likes of ISO level, for instance, it will change the overall lighting. Uh, the white balance is good to, uh, to change depending on the conditions you're in, if you're shooting in natural daylight, if you're shooting in uh, incandescent light, that kind of stuff. Now, if you do struggle a little bit when it comes to the likes of ISO levels and white balance, don't worry, because there is this handy little graphy feature which you can bring up with just a quick tap. And what that does is it actually gives you recommended settings depending on what kind of scene you're trying to shoot. So, for instance, if you're trying to shoot a cafe, it can then toggle the, uh, the likes of the ISO levels and all that. It'll actually tell you if there are some issues. So, for instance, obviously, this room is far too brightly lit, so the ISO level is too small. We need to boost it up a bit in order to uh, prevent the scene from being underexposed. The shutter speed also far too small. Let's just boost that up a bit and that will make the scene a bit brighter. As you can see, there are all kinds of different scenes to choose between and you can actually download some new scenes by downloading the Graphy app. There's also a cine video mode, which basically just tweaks your video settings to give everything quite a nice cinematic feel. And as you can see, LG's rather nifty point zoom feature is back as well. All you need to do is touch on the screen and it will zoom into that area uh, with a nice smooth transition. Very, very cool. Of course, you get a food mode for shooting your food. Does it make any difference? Mm, questionable. And the flash jump cut is quite nifty as well. It basically allows you to shoot a GIF. Uh, you can toggle exactly how many pictures are taken, just down here on the left edge, all the way up to 20. And it takes uh, photos, as it says there, every three seconds and automatically saves a GIF file. Again, here's a couple that we made earlier. As usual with these LG camera apps, you can quick share all of your creations just with a quick tap of that little arrow over on the right side. As you can see, you can share with the likes of Twitter, Facebook, stuff like that. Another quick tip as well, if you want to get closer to your subject, all you need to do is press and hold the shutter button and then drag your thumb up. And as you'll see, you'll zoom in uh, just for the digital zoom so that it doesn't have the same awesome five times hybrid zoom as the P20 Pro. You can also zoom all the way back out. And if you actually zoom out while using the primary lens, it will automatically swap to that secondary wide angle lens, which is quite nifty. And that right there is a close look at the LG G7's camera tech. Stay tuned for an in-depth review and comparison with some of its strongest rivals, such as the Huawei P20 Pro and the OnePlus 6. Don't forget to give us a subscribe and ding that notifications bell to be the first to know when all that lovely stuff goes live. Thanks for watching, everyone. Love you.